Oi, how funny when Brendan called Siwa. Fucking hell, how yeah, he thinks he's American. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that. Oh, yo, yo, what up, is Siwa? You called me your <laughs> man. Is so funny. And then it, and then it goes for so, so long, long, like, to leave a message. You know what I will say? I love the um, the phone calls when they when they the call song rings out. Spot. Yeah. Okay, if you had to pick a song for your ringtone, your voicemail, what is it? Mm, like back in the day when you'd Bluetooth a song that was your ringtone? Stop. Um, yep, so it rings through and then it goes, beep, beep. What song's playing? Probably an annoying song that gets stuck in your head for everyone. Like, I don't know. You? Well, you know what song I like? What? I like it for an um, alarm in the mornings, but I think it'd be a good little one to finish on. I got a puck, I got a puck of a little sunshine. That's, that's like, so annoying. I know. It's like cute though, like rings. Mm. I like it. Yeah, that's a good one. And, but you know what people used to do back in the day? What? They'd record have a couple this. ones. They'd record it and they're record like, Record it. You've reached the home of Cooper and Keely. <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Are you serious? About. That's how people would like say that they're dating. <laughs> No idea that was a thing. Are you serious? What, yeah, you they'd did play that? like, um, oh, I didn't do that. It's from like the early 2000s. Oh, they would have their voice, their home thing, and then it's like say it was Cooper's house, it'd be like Cooper and then in the background, and Keely. And that's how they'd like say that they're dating. You've never heard of that? Apart from like obviously doing that, like, hi, you've reached Shelly and David and the kids, leave a message, you know, like that they're married. Yeah. Yeah, but then there'd just be a song in front of it too. Oh, I know. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, big thing back in the early 2000s. I'll have to get onto it. Maybe I might put a song on my ringtone or on my voice message. Anyway, it's good to be back. It's been a long time. We did say we were going to do a podcast every week and we failed already. We've both been busy. I've been away. Um, but I'm really excited to get stuck into it all chat about what we've been up to um, and I actually was really excited for the podcast today. I was driving here and, you know, Sydney being Sydney and it's early in the morning and peak, peak hour, I take one wrong turn, end up in the city. One wrong turn? Well, uh, after a couple of wrong turns, <laughs> I take another wrong turn, end up on, the, on somebody else's lane in a bus lane, like I'm getting beeped. Uh, stress levels through the roof, like sweating. Sydney sucks. I know. I was on the phone with you and you I were had to panicking. Hang up. <laughs> I've never, you just drive Sydney like crazy. You, well, you just miss one lanes. thing. And you know what I hate? What? If you go through a tunnel or something, like I'm good on my normal way. I know exactly how to get here, but we're coming from a different way because mm. we had training last night. And Maps just doesn't know what it's doing in Sydney. And yes, then but you, you don't pay attention. You yeah, do not. You're I know. on the phone to me. I'm looking yeah. at my thing. You're probably doing three other things yeah. in your head. You're not paying attention. Then you turn on the wrong side of the road. I just, okay, anyway, it's not surprising for me. It just puts me in the shittest mood when you get stuck in like so much traffic and you're in the wrong spot. And you know, you, like, I hate traffic. Traffic is probably the thing that literally turns me into another person. Yes, well, I will say as well, traffic when you need to pee is like mm. the next level. That's always us too. Coming yes, from coming from far further away. away, yes. Which won't be for too much longer. Hopefully. I don't want us to jinx it by talking on the podcast. Well, we're going to and we're not going to jinx it. Killy and I are moving in together. Are you excited? I am. I would like to know where we're going to move. Mm. We do. We are inspecting a place today, which I'm yeah. really. We've been really on realestate.com, like Airbnb. No I've looked everywhere. Yeah, you've looked everywhere too. Yeah, but we did find a place, so it's going to be me, you, and sorry, you, I, you, Kernick, and I. <laughs> right. Good job. Get your English right, and it's for the NRW season, so that we're not driving so much because. Driving sucks. It does. And it's not good for the body. It's not good for the hemis. Not good. Yeah. But, no, I'm really excited, especially if it's in a good location. Yeah, so we're inspecting a place today. It is in Bondi, like Bondi Beach, like beautiful. But we're like, wow, how is this in our 
<laughs> it came budget. up in our price range and we're like, how did this come up in our price range? Like it's in the grouse spot, like beach view. <laughs> anyway, sorry, so that, that word makes me laugh. Grouse. Grouse. Sorry, I love going. grouse. Grouse. Anyway, it is in a grouse spot. It is a good spot. What else would you say? Beautiful spot. Anyway, so we realised like why is this in our price range? This is ridiculous. Three bedroom, you know, two bathroom. Um, yeah, they've. It's, it's a construction site because in the lounge room and the living room is like a whole construction <laughs> wall. They're obviously doing massive renovations to the building. There's noise every day from... 7 a.m. till 5 p.m. and on Saturdays 8, 8 till 3. Till but we play on Sundays so it's not really an issue and there's no <laughs> construction on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> we're up early. We're up early. You know, it's probably just a good alarm clock if we're sleeping in anyway. 100%. And, you know. Might just be Koenig. We need to check with Koenig <laughs> will not. We'll have to get our earplugs. But we're not really concerned that it's a construction site. <laughs> we're not home through the day. Yeah. And it's just a just a place to sleep. sleep place to sleep. So yeah. we're going to go and have a look at that today after we do this. So. Yeah. Fingers crossed, guys. We'll let you know if we get the we construction get site. <laughs> Keely reckons there's going to be people lining out the door. I, I said, do. Keely, I don't really think. I think people are probably home more than we are because so they won't really like yeah. that. Who knows, though? Who knows, though? We'll, I think the Sydney market's crazy, so there's a good chance. I reckon we should make a bet on this and confirm next week. Okay. I reckon there'll be at least 30 people. 30 people? I reckon there'll be less than 20. What's the winner have to do? I mean, what's the lose after do next week? I don't know. We'll make that up during okay. the week. Let's just have a good old bed, eh? Yeah. Anyway, so we're excited to be moving in together. Be good. Okay, but what are you least excited about moving in with me? Least excited? Yeah, I'll start with my most excited. Okay, thing. like a – actually maybe do um, a shit sandwich where it's like compliment, bad compliment. Okay, compliment. I'm really excited because you are definitely the best cook i ever met oh thanks no worries so i'm excited okay and you make really good healthy stuff too oh nice okay nice. i'm really excited because oh, no. you're always motivated you always get your gym done you always want to do stuff like and that'll get like we're both morning people you know we'll want to make the most out of living yeah. there that will be i fun. think that's what we'll be excited about yeah yeah i just feel like it's easier living with somebody who's like like-minded well, it would just be fun. Like yeah. 7 a.m. we can go get our gym done. Yeah, you know? as soon as that construction starts, we're, we're in. in. <laughs> we're in, ready to go. Yep. Um, what are you not what excited? What least excited? Least excited. You don't have too many like bad things. Really? Like too many bad traits. Maybe I feel like you're a very, um. how do I put this? <laughs> like I feel like you know when you're home Like you'll never just be in your room quiet <laughs> <laughs> Like the music will be blaring mm. You'll be singing Getting everybody up Up and at them Which is sweet Because most of the time You're not up like that early yeah. But there's just no Oh is Millie home? You'll know if Millie's you'll home. Know if Millie's home So if I want some time Just maybe for a little sleep Maybe you can go down to Wollongong or something If you oh. <laughs> Actually that's it too I won't be able to nap You won't let me I'm nap not, I, w I will let you nap But there'll be construction going on I can today. sleep through anything <laughs> I'm not a napper But like You can nap We'll see <laughs> We'll see um, What are you going to say? Look, I I'm just going to say, look, you definitely know when you're home because there is shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you literally, like, I feel like you'll just have clothes in every corner. <laughs> you'll be like, well, let's, okay. What about you rocking up to training for the last two weeks? Oh, uh, You know what? No, <sighs> to be honest. Your be clothes honest. are wet and dirty. She not dirty, leaves them. Not dirty. That's they're why dirty they're wet. that morning and then you, she hand washes them in the sink <laughs> and then she puts them out her car window and then I'll call her on the phone and they're like this. <laughs> flapping on the car. Okay, it's happened the last two times and I know that's a lot but we have one training kit which is. Yeah, and there's a few days in between training though for that kit. It's two days. I'm a busy lady. Two days to you get, get washing home, done. You get home, put it in the wash. 
Yeah, well, it just hasn't happened, okay? <laughs> so I've had to hand wash. I got my lavender soaping thing, wash it in the sink, and then I try to wring it out as much as I can and put up the window, let it hang out. But because <laughs> the pants, oh, my God, they're so bad. They've the got inbuilt bad. undies. <laughs> They're so bad. They're so bad. They're like these big white granny panties. We would cut them out, but they're, they're literally like, literally like they're like wearing undies. Like the it's pants. crazy. They're the so pants bad. are crazy. Whoever designed our training kit, give yourself an upcut. Anyway, they're crazy. But the whole inside of the pants were like flapping on the window, <laughs> so you could just see these like <laughs> ugly grey white <laughs> granny undies outside. And it took us three hours to get home. Oh, it was a long weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have oh, asked a few cars. But, yeah. yeah, I'm not the most organised person with that kind of stuff. But you know what? I reckon I'll be good living with other people. When mm. it's just me and Cooper, I'm like, mm. it's not a priority. Yeah. All right. Well, well yeah. the other thing. Oh, no, you've got oh, to say you got, one. you got to shit on me straight away. No, 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 I'm done now. I'm done. I was going to say a good thing, but it's your turn to say a good thing. Good thing. You know what? It's a good and a bad Oh. I do like, I mean, because I've already mentioned it, I like that you have music always going. I just listen to podcasts. Yeah. I just yeah. put it playing all day. Yeah. But I feel like I'm it, a music gal. you're a music gal. You get up, you put the speaker on, mm. get everybody up, ready to go. I do love music. I, I actually just realised the other day for literally how long have we been in this house? Six months? We don't have te- like. Our television doesn't work. Yeah. And Adam's yeah. parents were up and they're like, your television doesn't work. And I was like, I didn't even know. Yeah. Because we'd never watch telly. Like, I'm not a TV person. We sometimes watch an episode in bed on the iPad yeah. or whatever. But anyway, it doesn't work. Yeah. I love I'm music though. I love the speaker. I really love, and I'm hoping you do too, um, Zach Bryan's live concert. <sighs> Cooper's been playing it. No way. He has. What, I'm not drinking. I don't know, but it's, he's been playing it a lot. Okay. He's a music person too when he's cooking. I love, maybe Cooper can move in, you know. You guys would get on. Yeah. One other good thing, even though you just gave me a bad thing, um, I was going to say is we will be more consistent with the podcast and we'll have more yes. stories because you'll be doing dumb stuff and I'll be able to talk about it. And because you don't tell me all the dumb stuff you do. Ditto. <laughs> Uh, anyway, can't wait. Fingers crossed for the sub. Oh, I'm so excited. I really hope we get this afternoon. Yeah. I really just want to go straight up to the real estate agent, suss out what's happening. Suss out with the two other people there? No. I just they, – there's games that get played at these kind of things. Oh, I'm keen to win for it. For all of the <laughs> inspections you've been to. I'm keen to win it. Well, you know what? I've been to one and guess what? I got the one. <laughs> i tell you why. <laughs> this is how it works. When we were building ours and we'll have to rent at – Fairy Meadow. You offered more. Yep. Went in, sussed it out. I go, oh, we get it. You're we rich. want this. <laughs> we want this place. <laughs> well, you look lower in the budget, so then you've got room to move. Then straight away, over 50 people went for it, but we offered more. Bang. We got it. Because it stands out. It stands out. Well, if there's four people living there and you pay $20 extra, that's 80 bucks. Mm. That's 80 bucks that they're in their pocket and yep. it makes you stand out well, on the application. dollars more. That's 100, 100 bucks. Exactly. So if better. you really want the place, we've got to offer more. We've got to offer more. So okay. we'll suss it Let's out. Let's try and not offer more for the construction site, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> um, look, <laughs> NRLW, let's chat some footy. We haven't really been able to really chat any footy no, because there hasn't stationary. been any footy. Yeah. We've been training a lot and I've actually been enjoying it, but I'm looking forward to playing some footy soon. Yes. Whenever that is, may be. It is good. I've played a few games. You've been playing up in Queensland. I have been. Keely the little FIFO gal. FIFO, yes. For the Toowoomba Clydesdales. Yeah, they go Toowoomba Clydesdales. But yes, it is fun being back playing. Yeah. Like it's just, it's good. It's what you train for. So, so you're playing with the big alley brig in yes. Clubland. Yes. How is it? And Kezzy. And Kez. Yes. So good. So good. What do you love about it? Like, is it different to the New South Wales comp? So different. Is it, like, so you're flying to Brisbane. Yeah. Getting a hire car, driving to Toowoomba, staying in Toowoomba. Yeah. And then coming, driving back, back to yeah. Brisbane and then flying back and then training on a Monday for <sighs> Roosters. Like, you're doing a lot. Like yeah, but we would be. It's just, 
It's like what extra ten weeks than our normal comp. Yeah, so yeah. I feel it's like, so good to be able to play. Yeah, yeah. How many it's games have you played better? now? Three. This will be my fourth fourth game yeah. this weekend. But it just makes training better. Like you're saying, you just if you've got a purpose each week and something yeah. that you want to work on, yeah. then at training, just puts a little pep in your yeah. step. Hundred percent. Yes. And um, been playing a bit of everywhere. You yeah, mainly lock. lock. Mainly lock. A bit of hooker, just in and out. Um, but yeah, mainly those two, just because that's what the team pretty much, like we have a gap there. Whatever the team needs. Shut up. You're but such a hero. Such a hero. Yeah. Um, no, but literally their, their lock that was there, she's actually gone over to the Super League. Oh. Yes. Rando. So that's why there was a position there. Nice. But yeah, it's been so much fun. It's heaps, heaps different to New South Wales comp. Yeah. Because I've only ever played in Harvey Norman and then the Illawarra comp. Yeah. I would say it's like actually similar to the Illawarra comp. Right. Where it's super physical. But I would say not as fast. Not as fast. And structured. So it's heaps more open play. Yeah. Which is fun. I really yeah. like it. Yeah. Very different. Because I only – I've only played a handful of games last yes. year in the Harvey Norman, but I'd always played for Burley Bears. What did you think the difference up. was? Well, I don't really think I played much. I, did, I c- you didn't couldn't play tell in the three games? Compare. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed – I feel like the New South Wales comp seems like more serious maybe. It is very serious. It's like very. Whereas like we would just be like, let's go. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I think, was in a good, I loved Bears. It was a good team, good yeah. crew. Yeah. Well, I think the difference between Harvey Norman is they were NRLW clubs trying yeah, to get a spot. True, so true, people true. would it's not pay like the, big money. Yeah. Like we've still got, there's still Roosters, there's Bulldogs, there's all of those NRL clubs. You never played as an NRL club in no. In Queensland, like. No, there was no for all Broncos. The, no. But tons. in the New South Wales comp there was, yeah, Roosters, yeah. Steelers, sharks. Dragons, Sharks, yeah. yep, Tigers, all of that. So it was a lot stronger It's probably systems. a lot more, si- yeah, system. Systematic. Yeah. But anyway, um, so yes, two new teams coming into the comp. I know. Well, we welcome back. Yes. Our... Warriors sisters, they're back in. That'll be interesting to see what happens there. I think it's so good that they're in. Like it's absolutely unreal. So good. They, they should have been be in this year. Yeah. They should have been a part of that last expansion Expansion in the 10. Yeah. But they're going to be here next year mm-hmm. along with the Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, Bulldogs have got great junior pathways. They've been doing a lot um, in their development um, systems. Like didn't they in the – was it one of the – Lisa Fiola or Tasha Gale? They beat a team like 94 and yeah, the other week. against the Dragons. 94. That's heavy. Was it, it is, against really the Dragons? Heavy. I thought it was against one of the Manly or something. No, nah, Manly go pretty good I think. No, well they recruit a lot, right. um, Bulldogs. Like I know they have based a lot of their stuff around getting girls over from New Zealand at a young age. No way. Yeah, yeah. like Amalia, she played it for Bulldogs. So they fly girls. Yes. Over here yes. to play in the under 18s. Yeah. Wow. Like, pretty sure. So, what? Maybe those girls that have been in the development systems for the Bulldogs will play at the Warriors. Potentially, like, but it could be like if you have a connection to that club already. You've got it already, or if they want to come to Australia. Yeah, it'd be like the other girls in, mm. in um, teams that are from New Zealand. Yeah. But uh, I think it's so good that. Warriors are back in yeah. with how many girls from New Zealand are now in the NRLW. 100%. It's hectic. The only yeah. thing is it's going to be really hard because you can't get out of your contract yeah. easily. It's going to be a mutual agreement. Yeah. And this is the first time we've um, had multi-year contracts. So they've only literally as of last week let people know, like as of everyone, players, the clubs the teams, themselves, the clubs, themselves like pl- clubs would put out the expression that they wanted to be a team but they only got told – a Last week or two ago. Yeah. And so if if someone really wants to go, if they're in Australia or if they're coming over from New Zealand to play for Australia, they might have already signed a two-year contract with a club. Mm-hmm. But if they want to play for the the Warriors, like how does that – they've got to try and get out of their contract if yeah, they want so to. Yeah, so they've got to speak to the club. Like, and like who's going to be left to play for these two new clubs? Like is it just who's off contract? Yeah. It's well, really it will fair. be. I know it is really hard for them. It would be like ideal if they had way more notice and there was like a clause that people could get out of. But it's just so messy. Like it is really messy. But I think if a player like 
especially with New Zealand because of how that is and that it's mm. overseas, if people really want to get out of their that contract, I think clubs will be – Yeah. So the Bulldogs will be at – Bulldogs will be harder, will much harder. Yeah. I think. Mm, this will be very one. interesting. Like, how, like, look how much thought and care went into the Dolphins joining the NRL. And they got 18 months notice. 18 months notice for one team. And they're like, yeah, in six months' time we're going to chuck in two more teams. Like, it's not really fair. It's hectic. It's actually – it'll be very hard for the new teams. Yeah, and like to coaches, come in and who's coaching? Like, yeah. And you can't really, like, go and poach someone who's already signed another contract in another team. Like, yeah. it's almost like the player's got to reach out to say, I want to come, like – and you know what will be weird as well? It'll be the first time that girls are playing with their current clubs being contracted for the next year. like with, At a different club? Yes. Yeah, that hasn't happened That before. hasn't happened, so that'll just be a bit interesting. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? And my only thing with um, teams like that, not teams like that, all teams, is – Throughout the season, and obviously the comp will go a little bit longer because these two new teams, but like the wet, we struggle with the depth of mm-hmm. players yeah. in key positions like spine players. Like, I just don't think we've got enough right now, like spine players at every club and the development of them. Yeah. It, it's a, another big jump. But you know what? I was very surprised with how last year went. I was very surprised. I thought it was much smoother. Yeah. I thought there'd be a lot bigger blowouts, especially early in the season. By the end yeah. of the season, it kind of did. Yeah. With the depth being yeah, but that's very thing, much like, tested. The depth gets tested and there was only 10 rounds. I know. Well, they probably just need to increase the squads yeah. would be the suggestion. But there's not heaps and heaps of girls that are the right age and mm. have... It'll come. In the years to come, it'll definitely come. Yeah. It's a big step up from playing under 18s to... Oh, it's huge. Women's. It's opens. huge. What I have seen a lot more of, and it will be really good um, if they are allowed to, and I think New Zealand Sevens do it so well where they let their players yes. um, leave to play rugby league because it's in the off season. Mm-hmm. They might miss one tournament. It's up to their, you know, themselves whether they want to do that. And they come over and they play because Sevens, they're full-time athletes. Yep. If we can get more players from Sevens come over – you know, look at New Zealand Sevens, look at the Warriors. They can get like a, a spine out of that and then build a team around them of players coming back, other girls from rugby, rugby league over mm-hmm. there. Rugby league's still a massive sport yeah. in New Zealand. Yeah. And if you can centralise that at the Warriors, like mm-hmm. they've Especially always got an international team and also like that touch of Sevens and – like it's yeah. so good how they do that. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with how the men's are going as well. Like it will just I be know. everybody I, will get behind it. Oh my god. Everyone will just be want to play for the wilds. Yes. Like, they'll just want to call themselves. <laughs> but you know what I think will be hard with that is that it is expanding. So it's gonna be more time out of their season. Their season. So I don't think it's gonna be like viable after. But I do really? think there'll be a lot of girls that come over maybe after the Olympics. After well look yeah, after this their, year and then maybe next year I there'll true. be Big influx, and well, then it will settle a bit. Um, hasn't Stacey Walker just signed at yes, the Broncos? Bronx, so yeah. they've got a good little connection with the players that have yeah, gone over there. She's a weapon. Yeah, so good. Like, yeah, yeah I she's mean, literally going straight after the Olympics. I think. Did I have a dream that Portia Woodman signed at a team, or did she just? No, that was just a dream. That was just a dream. Hmm. Dream big. Dream big. Portia Woodman. <gasps> you want a spot? Where, what position would you play? Her? You could literally play her anywhere. Like she's a w- she's a winger, but like wingers in sevens are yeah. like forwards, kind of like yeah. It's not specific. It's not like they can play anything. Yeah, positions anyway. Yeah, but her at center, wing, second row, Arkham. fullback. Anyway, interesting. Portia, <laughs> if you want to play. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's exciting to see. I can't wait. It'll be good. Really good. Anyway, moving well, on. Well, actually, you know what we haven't even spoken about? What's that? What you've been doing for the last two weeks? Yes. Kokoda. The Kokoda Trail. I think if I've spoken to you since I've gotten back, you'll know I'm a walking billboard for people who need to do the Kokoda Trail. Put it on your bucket list. You need to do it. Nobody told me how 
good it was going to be. Like people said it's really good but what you hear about it is the physical aspect of it. Like and that's what you think about. You think about the physical aspect of doing the Kokoda Trail but nobody tells you about the emotional, mental, spiritual connection and toll that plays on you. Like you learn so much about, you know, the 39th Battalion, the, the Second War, like the Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, the Choco Soldiers, so much stuff that we have never really been educated on and no. I felt like, you know, we, we've got um, Anzac Day coming up and a lot of people go over to do um, the Kokoda Trail and and do oh, it wow. through Anzac yeah. Day. So we had a really quiet period because it's like um, that time before a lot of people come over for Anzac. And we do not recognise or acknowledge our, our PNG brothers and sisters who did so much for us, for the Australians, against the Japanese in that World War II to like claim – that land like it's just insane like what they did for us and what they sacrificed for Australia and I don't think that ever gets acknowledged in our history enough. No definitely not You hear about the Kokoda Trail but you still don't really put it with PNG. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree? Have you learned much on it? Yeah no I totally agree. No I don't know much about it at all. I know like I've heard stuff but not I just think through school maybe a little bit. Yeah. But nowhere near as much as what I should know. No. But do you learn about it as you're going? They're just like... As you're going, each spot you're at and you have historians with you. Everybody has... You have a porter with you. You have a historian. And let me say as well, the porters, people go, oh, aren't you going to carry your own bag? You're going to get blah, blah, blah. It's literally for safety. Everyone carries a bag. They just carry a bag and they need less stuff than you because they're so used to doing it with less stuff. So... Everyone's got a bag, but this track is single file the whole way through, like single file. 99% of the track is single file. So you, it goes you, porter, trekker, porter, trekker, porter, trekker, porter. So you build a great relationship. I think I know more about my porter than my porter knows about him. Tommy, love him. Um, <laughs> it is so special. We're, like, we're back to the single file stuff. If you take one wrong step, like it looks like you are – on just like a normal path but like it's actually the top of a rainforest and then it's just plants but it's actually like a 200 meter drop like it's insane you could literally just fall off like they are there and they just grab your bag and pull you up like it's crazy and if there's heaps of rain and it's muddy you are slipping non-stop you're falling over non-stop like did you see any very close encounters like did anybody oh. were you like that was way too close. If if we didn't have porters, absolutely. Yeah. Like there are people that fall off and like you just kind of grab onto a tree or you grab onto like. How do they do it though? They do it with like babies in their hands. It. They do. The people from the villages walk the Kokoda track like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. They've got a little baby on one hip. They've got no shoes. They've got a basket on their head and then they're carrying a buddy sling bag. We've got proper socks, shoes, hiking poles, like ridiculous we feel Mm. pathetic doing it like it was so crazy they're just so adapted to what they do they walk across um trees that have fallen over across massive streams like with no like balance is all sweet like Mm -hmm. nothing that's those bloody calf genetics very true very true but honestly and so each spot along the way you have like they tell you about like brigade hill and why that was important and like the different plaques and memorials and like there was this massive rock, it was this big diamond rock and um, it was really flat and it was just by chance it was a big flat rock and it was known as the surgery rock that like when people would have need to get amputations or surgeries or like when, oh you know, gosh. like just crazy and like these 19, 20, 21-year-old Australian boys like get f- got getting flown over to fight and they would had no idea what they were in for. Gosh. And these Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, like the pup, local Papua New Guineans would help them like say s- show them where the Japanese was, where they were closing in on, how they outsmarted them, like the vantage points because you're literally going down a hill just to go up a hill. You're literally going wow, yeah. up and down. You might not go that far. You might only go say 3Ks, but it's taking you an, you an hour because it's so steep, whether it's uphill or downhill. Like the terrain is just insane. It is 
yeah, crazy. We had one girl get medevaced out. That um, is hectic. She had to get chop it out. So that's the only way you can get out is literally you oh get chop it out. Oh, my gosh. How do you make that cool? Like how do you make that cool? Yes. She had um, like infected feet. Her toes had infection. Yeah, because if you don't keep your feet dry, your toenails can like, yeah, <sighs> and then she needed like antibiotics and oh stuff like gosh. that. Oh, my gosh. And if you're not hydrated, like you get like delirious and like, yeah, it's pretty, it is oh, crazy. I really want to do it. You are the slowest walker in Australia. So <laughs> it might take me like 16 days. You might days. have to go with like a um, slow group. <laughs> Is we'll there like a time frame? So they have like oh, this you, is a twelve day group. Yeah. Well, sometimes that would be a long group. We did it in eight days, but sometimes we were leaving at dark with our head torches on mm-hmm. and getting in at dark, like at night. But it depends so, on like the river crossings and like timings and stuff. I wanna know. So what was your like morning routine? What did that look okay. like? Morning routine. Do you have an alarm? Uh yeah, this is our alarm okay, ready. Sorry. So the leader, Ezra. Great man. He'd give us a briefing at night about the next day. And so four o'clock, wakey, wakey. He just walks around at four <laughs> o'clock you, saying, wakey? wakey, wakey, like clapping, wakey, wakey. So you knew you just like, I swear to God, I had the, thanks to my whoop, <laughs> I know I had the best sleeps of my life over in Dakota. That's wild. Never had so much REM sleep. Now I'm back. I'm getting nine minutes. It's ridiculous. Anyway, waking up. Four o'clock, straight away, you would pack your um, sleeping bag into your thing and then we had a little um, blow-up mattress. It was pretty much on the ground. It, it just deflates you on the ground. But you'd pack that away as well mm-hmm. and then you'd sort out like your dry bag, your wet bag, put on your new clothes. Dry bag, wet bag? Well, like a wet bag if you got wet clothes. So what do you do with your wet clothes? You just take you them just put them in a... Well, the key is you just don't wear many clothes. You just reuse the same clothes because you don't want to carry too many wet clothes. Mm, Everything ends up wet and dirty. It's gross. But anyway, so you put on some clothes. I wore the same clothes like three or four days and then changed. New undies and bra, obviously. Mm -hmm. Actually not even bra, just new undies. Anyway, um, so you get changed and then... Sort out your bags and then your porter come and grab your big bag to put other stuff in. Then you put your tent down, put your tent with your porter. They help you do that. They're so good at it. How long do you reckon that takes? The tent I down? honestly don't even know because I didn't have a watch the whole time. But then you'd go, you'd have your flashlight on, go brush your teeth, whatever. You'd go get breakfast. I had wheat beaks with hot water every morning oh, and I'd get fresh bananas from the villages. So that was good. Yep. That's so good. I know, it's so good. And then I kind of became like the one of the little strappers. So I'd like strap people's feet, blister pads, whatever. Um, yeah, you'd strap your own feet, that kind of thing. And then you'd literally leave while it was still dark. Like you'd get a little another little briefing and then you'd head off. So with your head torch. How good's that? And then yeah. you just walk. What, what would you do for lunch? You'd stop at a place where there was a village or a campsite or a river um, and stop and the chefs would run ahead and like cook lunch. But lunch was like um, two minute noodles or sometimes it'd be like um, spam and non refrigerated cheese on a wrap or something or tuna. Pretty basic, but like. Did the job. Did the job. Lots of snacks, lots of biscuits, mm. just like anything cups of tea, biscuits, heaps. Um, anyway. It was so good. The villages that you stay out and the people there, I swear to God, they're living like no power, no electricity, happy as, like just so beautiful in like the daggiest, oldest clothes that you can, they're just, you know what I mean? They just yeah. don't care. Like I love it. It's so beautiful. They just love people that come through and we'd play um, Daisy, my sister and I did it together it, with the Marcuse Foundation obviously. With So there's 23 of us. And we'd play games with them when we got into camp and, yeah, it was so special. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. I definitely recommend it to everybody, even if you're a slow walker. Beautiful, beautiful part of the world, PNG. Have you got another one that you want to do, something else? Something else. Like has it inspired you to do another one next year? 
I would love to go back and do that with Adam. I think Adam would love that. I yeah. know he would love it. Um, I think Everest would be really cool. Oh, Just my base gosh. To How long is that with. walk? I don't oh, know. It's not really a walk, is it? I can Google it. I don't know. You've just got to train for the – it'd be cool because you, you train for the climate, like to climatise. Yeah, like, but that one's like real hectic. A lot of people die. That's if you go to the top, top. Oh. And some people do die. But like if you train for it, like you have the right like, – I don't know. That have one done just it, scares The boys me. have done it twice in, for the Mark Hughes Foundation. But it is a hectic one. Would you want to do anything like that? I would do something not Everest. That scares me. I think I'd just love to go over there and see, like, go to Nepal. And yeah, I just think, oh, you don't know with weather. It just scares me, that stuff. Mm. Mother Nature. I love that. Whereas, yeah, p that'd be awesome. It was really good. It was so good. I might start off with, like, a small one. I've mm-hmm. never even done – oh, I have, actually. You can actually. do Glen Rock at Newcastle. How long does that just, take? That's no, just the National Park. That's what we trained in. Yeah. It's good fun. It might be a good start. Yeah. Good start, work my way up. Maybe you can do it with my sister Hannah because you guys are about the yes, same Yes, we'll pace. be walking slow. You know mm. what? Just keep moving. Yes. And actually just following on that, I'm doing a fundraiser on the Gold yes. Coast. Daisy and I are doing a lunch, a little long lunch vibe. Um, so if anyone's on the Gold Coast wants to come around, we've still got a few tickets left. Keely's coming up. Maybe we can do a little podcast ep, <laughs> little <gasps> snippet. Little at the lunch, little raising live money. Podcast. Yeah, we're doing a live podcast. <laughs> Actually, don't tell that. No one will come. Um, <gasps> we're doing, yeah, that's on the Gold Coast, 14th yes, of April. That'll be good. So we've got some tickets left and, yeah, it's going to be good fun at the local in Burley. Prizes, raffles, live music, drinks, food, all of the above. Anyway, so, um, Yeah. What have you been up to while I've been away? Nothing anywhere near as exciting as that. Mm. Literally just training, even though you don't think I do stuff on my house. I do think you do. <laughs> I know no, you do. Inside and outside. Oh, no, you, you're do- being productive in the build of it. I'm yes. just saying like maybe you don't put your washing away or do it when you probably should. I do leave it for a very long time, but I got all that stuff done. Nice. Just working. I actually, I feel like when people ask, I don't know what to say. Mm. Just goes so quick. You're doing your coaching stuff. Yes. Yep. Doing that at a school, which is fun. Good fun. Nice. Okay. What about then? Maybe we go into a little break it up topic changer. Yep. Hot or not? Okay. Every week we have a new, <laughs> new segment. A new segment that we say we're going to do, but we just make it up as mm-hmm. we go. Okay. It's been seeing these around a lot on social media, more so than in real life, but they're obviously doing them because we see it. Yeah. Run clubs. Everyone is, if you don't know someone in a run club, you don't know, you don't have, like your friend group isn't probably that big. <laughs> Whoa. Well, everyone knows people. Everybody's in a, in a run club. Everyone's in a run club. Yeah. I've even actually been to a run club. You Does have. I, you I felt like it was club? a little bit before the trend though, mm. I will say. When we were... When was it last? It was last. I started going to one top run club, Centennial Parks. Yes. Thanks to some friends who invited me along. Yeah. It was actually good fun. Yeah, it would be. Absolutely. But is there big, is a lot of run clubs, isn't there? A lot. Apparently um, down at Wollongong now you can't even get a park because stop it. at like 6 a.m. Don't about, they run there? What They they, walk, they drive, drive there to meet up there. To meet up. And then they go from there. Right. But apparently no parks. Not a single park uh, from like 6 what, to 10. What, for like Dorothy who wants to walk a dog or something, you know. Or go get a coffee, lunch. Yeah. For me... Trending hot. I think hot. Mm. It's so good. Yeah. More people out exercising, working on their health and fitness, being better people. Yeah. It's great. And you know what else I've been seeing? What? That people are ditching social media apps and trying to find <gasps> love at Run Club. There should be a Run Club. Singles only. Dating app. Oh. That's like Strava. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, you can just like people's Strava stuff. Oh, can you? Yeah, I've never been on Strava. Yeah. That is so funny. So Strava yeah. actually is a dating app. No, it's not a dating app. But like, I feel like you could definitely flirt on Strava. 
<laughs> good job when you like it it says good job and it's like you could do that on their like really bad runs too like good job yeah, that'd be like well. a little bit of lots of hills oh my <laughs> yeah gosh. little comments right nice I, nice pace up those hills oh my gosh no but apparently like i reckon i reckon that's a good way to meet somebody i think you're because obviously both into the same thing yeah and or you're trying to be at the moment it's hard to meet people face to face because people don't like talking to people mm-hmm. you know i don't know how people actually meet how do people even meet? Well, that's each other? it. How do people meet? They meet out, meet on apps, now run club. And so good because alcohol isn't an influence. Mm-hmm. Very true. You get to see that's the real true. person. Very true. I like run clubs for. Dating. How did you guys meet? Run yeah. club. That is a nice story. How did your mum and dad run club? Run club. That is cool. I wonder if they keep doing run club once they get together. Or do people actually do it to get fit? Bit of both. Bit of both. I reckon this is what would happen. They get together, they fall off the bandwagon a bit because they're in love and they eat lots of shit. And then they go, come on, we're better than this. We met at Run and Club. And they put week, on heaps of weight. And they slowly and they get, get back into again. it. And then they, yep. Then about six months after, maybe a year after, they're back into it. And they. I just had an in. idea. What? Let's go to a Run Club when we move to Bondi. We'll be training. Yeah, we already have our own run club at training. <laughs> run club, yeah, every <laughs> bloody day. Okay. Maybe in the off season. Okay, I've got another one for you. Jorts. Jorts. Love them, not past the knees. <laughs> I think it's a not for me. Some people can pull them off. I definitely cannot. It's a no. You? I love them hot, hot. But you know what? I've never seen you. I want to see you wear jorts. And for those people who don't know, I have jorts photos. Are, I have photos. Give me the sh- photo I'll evidence show right you now of me in jorts. Okay. Jorts are like short jeans, jean but like shorts, jean shorts, but not short short. They're like they're like long, long shorts. Okay, I'll tell you. So when I'm in camp, they have to be really like big around the thigh. They do. Mine were mine are slightly too little. Mm. Um, <laughs> It's not painting the best That's picture. That's what makes George not good. I know, I know. But so pretty much I'm I was more of a squirt gal. I love squirts. Squirts are, squirt are sick. But so anyway, well, in camp, I've pretty much said to Olivia Kearney. I was just about to say Olivia Kearney can pull them off. She can. And she convinced me and to buy them you. because she's now, whenever we're in camp, my stylist. I try oh. to get her opinion as much as I can um, to help me. Okay, ready? This okay. is a photo of me in the George's. Okay, this is my live reaction, guys. I have not seen Keely in shorts. When did you wear them? They were a summer outfit. Don't you love? <laughs> <laughs> me, okay, mind you, I had a moon boot on, so <laughs> minus the moon boot. Yeah, it's the moon boot that's really oh, not making it work. Look at them with my stripe shoes. Hmm. You're not a stripe wear. That is a really nice photo of you, though. You look really like. Do you have extensions? Do you have extensions? Yeah, I do. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. Can you see this? Oh wait, let me zoom in a little bit more. The moon boot. Okay. Okay, moon boot. This is Keely with the jorts. Charlie, why are you laughing? (laughs) Charlie's even laughing. (laughs) What the hell, Charlie? You have to wear a small top. You can't wear a big top. You could not be wearing a smaller top. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. You need to be wearing a small top. Hmm. I was in Magnetic Island. You don't need to wear much clothes there. Yeah. Jorts are a bit too much. Look, I haven't seen them on you since. Since. I, I haven't ever. I need a real life jort dress up. Okay. Well, But like for me, hot. But I'm sitting on the fence. But you can't wear them. Past your knees. Also, you need a tiny top. Also, no boots with them. Boots look ridiculous. I okay. saw somebody wear cowboy boots and jorts and a little top. Not it. Wow. That's anyway, a lot going on. It is a lot. Speaking about a lot going on. Brittany out, Amanda in. What is going on? Okay. You know I love celebrity gossip. Yeah, you I know. know. I put this one in for you. Okay. I don't know if you guys have been looking at this stuff. Amanda Bynes, she was my favourite ever, What's with ever. the tattoo on the face? Okay. Literally, child superstar. I know. What do you reckon's happened? Drugs, bad influences. Yeah, but have you heard all the stuff about Dan Snyder? Yeah, he deserves to be dead. Yeah, crazy, so bad. So for people who don't know, can we can we talk about this? Yeah. It's like accusations. 
Well, what do I say? Have an, allegedly. A, a, allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Dan Snyder, and it's all this creepy stuff about Nickelodeon. Yeah. Was like abusing all the actresses and actors. And a lot of them have gone absolutely off the, the, rails. the rails. Amanda being one of them. Anyway, she had this old Facebook page because she's like her parents have a in a like what's that word Conserv- conservation ship Conserva- or whatever it is yeah. um she's got this Facebook profile and she's posted all these things saying like he got her pregnant when she was 15 yep that Dan guy yep and all of this stuff's just come out now and it got deleted within like 24 hours, so not many people have seen it, but it's all been resurfaced, people are posting. So there's this big movement on Free Amanda. Free Amanda. Yep. So and uh, what's happened to Brittany though? Nah, Brittany's old news. Oh, is she okay? I don't know. You know who actually did have a little, went through the rabbit hole of stalking? Who? Lindsay Lohan. She's doing really well. Is she? She's back. She's in, in movies. She's got a little... Son and a husband. Yeah. She's That's awesome. Doing really well. Good on you, Lindsay. Just in case anyone was wondering. Yeah. Amanda. Child not superstars. Well. It's hard out there. Nikki Webster, how's she going? Don't know who that I is. think she's you don't know who Nikki Webster is? Strawberry Kisses. Um I know that song. Yeah. Anyway. But yes. So anyway, I'm very interested to see what plays out with this stuff because Amanda's going on social media more and more very weirdly like she says she has a podcast and the next day she goes the podcast is not happening <laughs> kind of like us <laughs> then she goes i'm gonna be doing nails two weeks later not i no nails. longer do nails right so it's just so like she's really tapped it's real. it's really bad yeah this is really she put funny up this thing and she's like i'm fat right now i know that's bad that's bad did you say the thing about kanye west no <laughs> she put something off about kanye yes <laughs> Oh, what she put I can't up? speak about it on here. It's not PG. Oh, okay. But you got to search it. When you get home, it's so funny. And then there's she a put bit... something up about Kanye. Yep. And then good maybe, or bad? Like good. And then maybe like six weeks later, she, when she was like not on drugs, she like was getting interviewed and she was like, yeah, I was on drugs. Like, oh my God. <laughs> probably shouldn't have said that. It's really funny. She's crazy. Anyway, she is crazy. But seriously, her and hairspray. What about the Amanda show? Amanda She's show, great. But with the blonde hair in mm, on hairspray, iconic. She she I loved her in that. Yeah, wanted to be her. You either wanted to be her, or you wanted to win the Biggest Loser. One of the two. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. I think one more hot or not. One more hot or not. This okay. one's for you as well. Okay. You're the only one I'm talking to. Yeah. And the listeners out there, if you're listening, leopard print. It'll always be in for Keely. Millie, any kind of print. It has to be like a nice one though. No, no, it's safari. But it has to be like either cheetah, leopard. It has to be nice. There's tacky and there's nice. There's difference. Okay. But you know I love this. You know it will never go out of fashion. It's always in style. You just have to style it well. But it's on trend right now, which I actually don't like because then people start wearing it again and I look like I just wear trends. <laughs> I liked it about five like. years ago when You're nobody wearing wore jorts. it. And I was jorts there. are trending and you like them. You just said you don't like trends before. I don't like trends, but I, I like jorts at the moment. <laughs> just a little micro trend, you know, but to be honest, the print, that will never, ever die. You just got to wear it the right way. All right. You heard it here first. Leopard print. Never out, always in. You just have to wear it the right way. Right. And well, that was a bit of ramble today. A lot of ramble. But you know what? That's what we do. Don't know what else we do. It is. And it's good to be back. We're going to have a lot more to talk about next week. Yes, hopefully we'll have the house. Hopefully we'll have the house. Fingers crossed. Let's go check out our construction site, hey? Yes. Thanks nice. for listening. Thanks, guys. <laughs>